Okay, so. I actually even knew that. But, but it's better to check. It's better to check. Um, I make a motion that we move out of executive session. I uh, second. Supervisor Blackman? Yes. Council members Winters? Yes. Lord, yes. Pam? Avery? Yes. yes. And we're just resuming the meeting. Return to regular session. Yep. Okay, so. Um, Is that you? Oh, yes. Oh, good, Leo. And there's a second on that one? Second. <laughs> can we do that in one motion in the future? You, yeah, you should. Okay, you good to, to know. You can do whatever you'd like. Thank Supervisor you, I appreciate Blackman. that. Uh, yes. <laughs> Council members Winters? Yes. Revlar? Yes. Pam? Yes. Ahern? Yes. Okay, so um, do you need to do the roll, Dawn? Would you like to start the regular meeting? Oh, we'll start the regular meeting. Let's start with the flag. Um, we'll salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And the emergency exits. For anyone who's new here are the door you came in and this door over here. Okay. Dawn. And those present this evening, Supervisor Blatha. Here. Hi. Oh, hi. Oh, yes. You don't normally say, never mind. Okay. Yes, Council yes. members, Winters. Here. 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 All members are present. Okay, that's good. Um, so we'll start with public comment if people have comments uh, with a three minute max. Um, so is there anyone that wants to speak at this point? Okay. Hi everyone, <laughs> Sandro La Rosa at uh, 15 Spruce Hill in Armenia. Um, very briefly, you know, I, I, I happen to be somehow involved in some email exchange with, uh, with Paul uh, regarding some uh, grant uh, uh, liabilities that... <coughs> Can you pull the microphone closer? Yeah, regarding some grant liabilities that the uh, town is, is about. To and you know, I'm wondering, you know, there are uh, numerous uh, of these grants that are being uh, proposed. And I take on, uh, I think Councilwoman uh, Rosanne already pointed out in one of the last uh, meetings, you know, uh, that you know, by taking all this uh, liability, you know, we have to be very careful, uh, especially because I understand you know, there, are, there are some shortfall in the tax payment. You know, and each of these uh, grant application, you know, it's an additional load. That you know, it's calculated on a yearly basis, but yearly basis means for, for 30 years you have to, to add them all. So okay. I just invite you to make priority in, uh, in the liabilities okay. that the town is taking for. I don't think you have to worry about the, the tax issue because apparently Dutchess County guarantees taxes that are unpaid locally. Is that right? I see. Or did I make that up? Um, we're okay. satisfied as a town. Yeah. All okay. Right. Thank you very much. All right. Anyone else? Wow, this is going to be a fast meeting. Um, okay, so supervisor's report is next. Um, uh, there's too many things. I'll try to be quick. Um, the farmer's market, um, Northeast Community Center had to delay the start date again, as most vendors seem to have commitments for the summer. Um, you shouldn't despair, because we're still talking to farmers and trying to work something out. So we will have that before fall. Um, Senior Swim, Rosanna's uh, been in touch with um, Danielle, why did I say Denise? Danielle um, at AWCO for help with lifeguards, but there are no candidates, so that may also have to wait for the fall. Um, the town hall parking lot, the striping is uh, dependent on a machine that Stone Leaf is still waiting for. The sidewalk to Beekman Park, the contractor's been waiting for an okay for the New York State DOT. They expect to have an answer fairly soon. They got an email from them this week. Um, so all of that's incredibly depressing. But um, the town website, after a lot of complaining from residents, uh, Charlie put together a survey they were gonna send out to ask residents uh, what problems they've had in using ours. 
um, and once the responses come in, we'll determine if our existing system can be adapted or if we need to start from scratch. Um, planning and Zoning Board, all meetings are now shown live on Channel 22 and posted to YouTube. So it's not just the board. For people who are, are having trouble sleeping, those are two other opportunities. Actually, three meetings a month, so three more opportunities. Um, the ambulance service, I had a meeting with the Dover and Northeast supervisors uh, to plan negotiations for a new five-year contract with the Northern Dutchess Paramedics. Um, their first salvo was a 70% fee increase, which is kind of uh, uh, impossible for us. So we're hoping to negotiate that down. Um, also had a first conversation with a union rep for UPSEU, who represent our highway employees, um, about a new contract. Theirs expires at the end of the year. Um, the highway garage, um, the progress on that has been held up by uh, the New York State uh, SHPO, the Historic Preservation Officer, State Historic Preservation Officer, who's uh, determined that we need to do an archaeological survey. Um, Charlie actually obtained multiple quotes for that work, but too late to announce the resolution for tonight's agenda. Um, water district repairs, uh, on, we just heard from uh, the firm, the engineering firm we'd selected, and on the agenda tonight is approving them to basically prioritize and lead the project. Uh, the gym floor, also on the agenda tonight to improve the installer for the two different options. I think we've resolved the funding, so uh, uh, that will be up for a vote again, and hopefully we're able to move ahead. Um, Part-time deputy building inspector, that's also on the agenda tonight um, to hire a candidate to start in September. Um, that would be 20 hours a week and uh, we're very excited because we feel like a lot of zoning things uh, have kind of fallen through the cracks, so we think that will make a big difference. Um, new signage, if you didn't notice, the four welcome to Amenia signs uh, went up um, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, the building exterior, I did a walk around with John Nowak, our, uh, uh, our building superintendent, and uh, Dawn had pointed out some broken concrete steps and some other stuff that needs to be addressed, and also uh, there are a number of places where there's flaking paint, so those are not huge expenses, but we need to do that to make sure the building stays watertight and uh, safe. And um, the last thing I have uh, is, the Comprehensive Plan Review Committee uh, was requested to send a letter of support for the Pace Land Use Law Center. Um, they want to apply for a grant to fund Smart Growth Plan, uh, I'm sorry, it's actually called a Smart Growth Planning Grant. And what that would mean is that they would be able to provide free planning support to the committee. Um, and I would make a motion, hopefully everyone saw that, but it came very late, um, the, to approve uh, my sending a letter of support, which is in the packet. And I can read it, it's not terribly long, but um, on behalf of the Amenia Town Board, I'm pleased to provide consent and support for the not-for-profit Land Use Law Center at Pace Law for their application to the Department of State for a Smart Growth Community Planning and Zoning Grant. Amenia agrees to participate in the project. The area plans developed along with the site analysis for housing will be utilized for future funding and planning efforts by our community. Our town will benefit from receiving the existing conditions report of an identified smart, smart growth target area in our community, along with preliminary site analysis, including zoning recommendations and three days of land use leadership training for selected individuals in our community. Um, we're excited to work with the center through the training program to study the feasibility of an identified site in our community for the potential of housing. We will assist the center uh, in any data information that they may, may need and in the recruitment of appropriate leaders for the training program. Uh, we're specifically seeking assistance for our comprehensive plan review committee to develop a section in the plan regarding sustainability opportunities in the town. So that's basically the gist of that. And I would move that, uh, that uh, I get directed to uh, send that in to the uh, Pace Land Use Law Center as a letter of support that they'll use for their Department of State grant. I'll second that. Supervisor Blackman? Yes. Council Members Winters? Yes. Revelard? Yes. Pam? Yes. Ahern? Yes. Cool. Thank you. Um, okay. So, uh, Town Clerk's Report. Okay. Good evening. I uh, do have the minutes from our prior meetings, June 20th, July 1, and July 9th. 
Okay. Make a motion to accept those. I second. Supervisor Blackman? Uh, yes. Council members Winters? Yes. Revler? Yes. And yes. Ahern? Yes. I'm also aware that the board has had the opportunity to interview uh, several candidates for open volunteer positions. Are you guys prepared to make it action this evening? Uh, we are. And we that are. action yeah. would be? I would like to move, make a motion that we appoint Nancy Nowak to the Water Committee, uh, Vicki Doyle to the Comprehensive Plan Review Committee, Eve DeLeo to the Wastewater Committee, and Judy Moran to the Recreation Commission meeting to um, fulfill the, ex the term that expires on 12-31-24. I'll second that. Supervisor Blackman? Uh, yes. Council Members Winters? Yes. Revler? Yes. Pam? Yes. Ahern? Yes. Also presenting to the board this evening, the abstract totaling $532,787.38. And for a breakdown in our general fund, $259,331.42. Highway fund, $268,183.02. Amenia lighting, $1,166.66. Wasake Lighting, $444.98. Aminu Water, $3,661.30. And again, at this time, I'm seeking authorization for the supervisor to pay claims totaling $532,787.38. Um, I'll second that. Oh, was there someone? They have to make a motion. Oh, I thought there they was a motion. Just, I'm, I'm sorry. For a motion. I'll okay. make a motion. motion. Uh, Nicole started first. Do you want to? Second. I'll second. Okay, Paul. Supervisor um, Blackman? Yes. Council members Winters? Yes. Rebeler? Yes. Pam? Yes. And Ahern? Yes. Okay. Uh, and with that being said, that will conclude the town clerk's report. Happy summer, everyone. That was the shortest ever. She's wow, we're on, a, we're on a roll. She's ready for she vacation. is going on vacation, that's true. <laughs> um, the. Uh, Unless Bill, you have something on the water committee, I wasn't sure. We don't have the we don't have the operator here, but that would be great. Hi, I'm Bill Flood. I'm the chairman of the uh, water committee. I just want to bring you up to speed a little bit. Um, you, we bought a new meter reading system, which was installed uh, in the last month or so, and the first set of readings were done this quarter. So we only had 12 meters that didn't read, which uh, VRI is going back and checking the meters uh, that need to be replaced and so on and so forth. So at this point, it's working very well. Um, also, when we took over, we had uh, very little money in the bank since, we had an, since we've changed the operator that we've had. We've received no bills other than the one bill for Mechanic Street, other than normal maintenance. That's, that's all we've received. So we've actually put money in the bank. That's we exciting. put a, uh, roughly 115,000 in the bank. I believe Charlie, that's what we have. Charlie moved, we moved $75,000 also in a money market account. So we have money in the bank at this point and we're doing, and the bills are going, it just went out for this quarter. So we'll, we'll have some more cash shortly. Great. Um, other than that, we have, it's in pretty good shape. We'll, we will be making a presentation to the board probably in the next, next meeting for the, some rate increases that we have to have with the water. Uh, we'll deal with that. Um, and if you don't mind, I could do the uh, comp plan committee meeting at the same time. While we're here, sure. While we're here. So we're off to a good start now. We, we, we were off to a slow start, but now we have things moving forward. It's actually moving fairly quickly. It's a lot of work, uh, obviously. So now that we have a full committee that we should, we should be able to get, get it done. And one, we're up to chapter three, I think we're starting that now. Um, the other two are done, basically. But we are gonna need a, a land use attorney and a planner at some point. So I've asked Charlie to, to give us some money for the, in the budget for this year and next year. Obviously we're gonna need some money. Yeah. And to bring you up to, with your pace, classes, mm -hmm. myself, Vicki, and Tony Robustelli were the first three from Dutchess County that finished the whole uh, class. So How long ago was that? 25 years ago. Do you remember everything? Yes, sir. I figured you might. <laughs> John Nolan taught the class, and he was here. He actually helped us with our uh, 
comp plan. The original comp plan. Yeah, yeah. So the original comp plan. So that's great. It's it's well worth the money. Oh. So people should take the classes. Yeah, so they're really good. I've taken them really too. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, I know there's not a highway department report. Do you have the building department report was given to us? Yes. Presumably. Okay. Oh, look at that. Um, packet? Yeah. It's in my packet, but then I bring some, too many papers. Um, so uh, the income for the building department was uh, $660 for municipal searches, um, uh, 1325 for fire inspections, and for 27 building permits, $5,437.75. So the total department income for June is $7,422.75. Thank you. Um, also, in your, also in your, sorry, also in your packet, you are going to have the um, violation report as noted. That was my favorite part. Thank and you. And circulated prior to the meeting is your um, balance sheets and your um, operating statements. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the Recreation Co Commission report, I believe, is next. Thank you, Katie. Uh, it's not a commission report. It's a rec director report, but... Oh, uh, right. You're right. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I, uh, I, gave you a, I gave you an improved title. Sorry. I just want to go over some of the events that we have coming up. So this Monday, the 22nd, we have 2x2 two two Animal Haven coming. Um, that's at 1030, and we're going to be out by the playground. Um, I think the library is bringing their story hour over here as well, so there will be a bunch of stuff going on that morning. Uh, Saturday, August 10th from 10 to 11, we're doing a craft hour. Uh, registration just went live on our website this morning. Uh, Thursday, August 15th from 5 to 7, we're doing a family fun night at Beekman Park. Um, so we're going to have the libraries bringing the bubble bus, an ice cream truck, we have a tuck Little League is going to be selling uh, hot dogs and hamburgers. There'll be fire trucks, um, face painting, and some bounce houses. Um, the concert series is, is still in full swing, so the next band for Monday is the big band sound. Um, those concerts are at 6 p.m. on the basketball courts, and the last concert will be August 12th. The senior picnic is next Saturday, the 27th, at 12 p.m. at the Passaic Firehouse, so I can take reservations through tomorrow if anyone is still interested. Um, and then we have a senior trip coming up in September to the casino. Um, and I just want to cover some stuff happening at Beacon Park. I know there have been some people saying that there's not a lot of upkeep going on there. Um, so rec maintenance, and we have a rec intern from NECC. I'm not sure mm -hmm. if everyone is aware of that, but we partnered with NECC to have an intern. Oh, great. Uh, so they've been working on cleaning up the park area. So we've been cutting back trees, we're painting some signs, uh, they're removing some items from the f entrance of the park. Um, they cleaned up around the flagpole and put a new, uh, made a new flower bed. Um, we actually had a tree fall down today, so we were cutting a tr they were cutting a tree today. Um, there's just a lot of stuff happening to make it uh, clean up as much as possible. Then we had some people asking about the concession stand and what we were looking to do there and uh, rebuild. So the plans that we're looking to update on the concession stand would include handicap accessible bathroom fixtures, partitions, and water fountains. Working concession uh, prep kitchen for use only during games, also handicap accessible. Uh, the maintenance area, which is completely covered now, but it, the back half is open, so we want to enclose that to increase for more storage um, for supplies and stuff. And then we have to replace the lighting to meet code and the OSHA required light levels. Um, so the Rec Commission wanted to invite the board, to the ones that aren't familiar with what's going on at the concession stand, uh, to visit on their own, or one of us, me, Tracy, can give you a tour of what's happening there so you can see. Um, Crawford uh, and Stan, well, Crawford separate, and then Stan, they did the uh, digging this past week, so we're just waiting on a final report back on the septic findings. Great. Thank you. Good? Um, the, the lighting that wasn't to code, are you talking about the pavilion or elsewhere? The concessions, like the whole concession yeah, stand. Yeah, the concessions. Yeah. Okay, thanks. So I think sometimes when we refer to the concession stand, we, it's just referring to the whole building. But like, if you're thinking of concession, it would be like the front half, then it goes yeah. the bathrooms, right. then maintenance. So I should be saying pavilion then? Well, no, the pavilion is like the out part of it. Okay. So just, it's, it's just the stand, just call it a concession right. stand. Okay. I don't really know what else to call it. <laughs> okay, thank you. You're welcome. 
Um, any other board or committee reports? Charlie, neither one? Okay, there you go. So that's it for reports, um, discussion items. So the, uh, the planner uh, has gotten started on the, um, the cannabis law. It would have to be a local law for the town. And she had a few questions for the board, which I figured we might as well discuss while we're sitting here. If I can find it. Six. I know it's here. Let's see, too many papers. Does anyone else have that just to look at? I have it on my phone. Okay, so that's good. Okay, yeah, that would be great. I just was looking to see. Okay, um, so I think a lot of it is pretty, um, is stuff that we've talked about before. Um, the permitted zoning districts were Hamlet mixed use and highway commercial. Um, the separation requirements minimum was 500 feet from school grounds, 300 feet from a public library, 200 feet from a place of worship, playground, or public park, and a thousand feet of another dispensary. Um, the um, I, 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 as long as we don't have complaints from uh, from any of the places of worship, I think we're good on all that. Well, I, th I, th I actually think we should change that. With the media green coming around, I don't think I think it should be 500 feet from from the park. So since that um, instead of just being 200 feet, and also uh, the 200 feet from the place of worship, I really think that should should be the 500. You know, Pine Plains, um, all of theirs is 500, and I think we should go with that. Um, I have some concerns about having it. Um, one of the things that was stated in one of those reports was off off street parking, and uh -huh. I don't think we have any. Um, we don't have enough off street parking on Main Street, um, and also. Um, in talking, actually I spoke with the um, bus garage, um, there are bus stops that are along there and there's a lot of congestion, you know, like on the bottom half of... Uh, I'm sorry, where specifically? Uh, in front of Monty's. Oh. Um, because there was some talk about having, having possibly having um, the dispensary on Mechanic Street. Uh -huh. um, so there's a lot of congestion there. It's very difficult um, pulling out of that road. Uh, the vision is not great. Uh, when you come out of there. So I don't think that we should have it anywhere on Main Street because we just don't have the off-street parking. And we have a lot of congestion. Okay. I guess um, I'd like to just look at, uh, like actual, look at a map with, with uh, looking at, at radius, radii of those different options so I sort of understand what that what it would includes mean. and what it excludes. Yeah. So um, I did that once before, and I didn't do it very well, Paul, as you remember. But I yeah, I went, I went down and measured everything out. Mm -hmm. um, my only comment would be if we expanded um, to the 500 feet from a place of worship or a playground or a public park, that would exclude anything within the downtown area completely. It would push it to the either to Freshtown Plaza or out to um, say by the. Uh, the ice cream shop, that would be the only two locations that would be viable with that 500 foot. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, this is a an adult use facility, right? It's just like a liquor store. Um, you go in, liquor stores are, operate from like 10 till seven at night, 10 in the morning till seven at night. Um, the people that are going to go and purchase legal marijuana, they're not gonna walk out and go hang out in a park and consume because they're gonna be concerned about getting arrested driving home. You know, it's just like when you go to the liquor store, you buy yourself a bottle of booze, you go home and you have a party. That's how I see people utilizing this premises. That's it. Okay, and I still have a, you know, hungover, well, not a hungover feeling, that was a bad way to put it, but I still have a concern that if we, um, that if we push the dispensary too far out of town that we won't get people going to anything but the dispensary, but I think that may be inevitable, so. Um. I think it's gotta be inevitable because we have, there's no place to park. I mean, I think you're, 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 I mean, we can't keep businesses there now. Um, part of that's wastewater, part of it is, I, I don't know what else, but I don't think we're gonna keep a business there, um, whether it be a dispensary or whatever it is, unless we have some sort of parking. And again, the you know, it, it just is, it's just counterproductive you know, to 
to do that. I think it should be, I sh think it should be outside of town. You know, back in the day, all the bars were outside of town. And I now mean, we don't have any. But now, well, now we don't. Well, we do have some. I mean, oh, really? we have the state house. And I need to get out more. Uh, okay. But but they were all. You know, if you notice, historically, they were never in the center of town. They, okay. they were, you know, the chateau, you know, the Brookside, you know, all those places. They were all out on, on, on the corners. Um, and, and part of that was parking. Right. Okay. Well, that's uh, that's clear. Thank you. Um, the submission requirements uh, are. Uh, all of those are pretty straightforward, except the lighting and landscaping plan and a decommissioning plan, which is kind of interesting. What, what is a decommissioning plan? Well, that's why I was sort of surprised. The decommissioning plan is if you have something like a cell phone tower, that there has to be a plan for taking it down and repairing mm -hmm. the stuff around it. I, if, if we're talking about a store, I'm not really sure what that would be, but we could certainly ask the lawyer. Well, I, I, think, I think New York State is also requiring that because they've implemented a lot of laws or regulations on that to, wow. to make sure things are done correctly. Uh, Ian, do you mean, does that mean anything to you? Uh, I'm not aware of, of the, the, the law regulation behind it. I would speculate that it would have something to do <clears throat> with um, Inventory. So, if, if a place went down, the inventory would have to be how that would be handled. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, and then, um, then it's just notifying the town clerk. That's pretty straightforward. Two, operational requirements on site consumption prohibited, which I think is the way we discussed it originally. Um, hours 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Saturday, and 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. on Sunday, which is the same as liquor stores. Maximum of three dispensaries in town, copies of New York State license renewal submitted to the town, um, and expiration of the license uh, four years from once the thing is approved. So uh, the next section was about uh, sign design standards for retail dispensaries. Um, it says, uh, the, the suggestion is that it would be subject to existing sign regulation in our zoning code. Um, as well as sign regulations promulgated by the New York State Cannabis Control Board. Um, and some of it, like no interior illum illumination, flashing lights, or moving signs, um, and three square feet. I mean, that is from Amenia. Um, Off-site signs prohibited unless approved. That's also from Amenia. Uh, maximum sign, the size is from Amenia, 16 square feet, uh, typically, and 32 wall-mounted. 25% um, area window sign. I think that's just window, one window though. Maximum two, New York State says maximum of two signs. And they also say the content is limited to business name, location, contact information, and business type, which seems a little weird because I would think that a logo should be permitted. Um, so uh, that might be something we I've, I've seen logos in other towns yeah. and I would recommend against it because usually it's just this huge flashing neon marijuana leaf and I don't think that that's what we're looking to. Really? <laughs> there, are, there are uh, no. nicer ones than that? Yeah, much nicer. Well, it can't be neon anyway. Yeah. Well, it, it just, you know, you can do this in a correct way and it's, you know, done nicely. It doesn't, okay. we don't need to be a big flashing pot sign okay. in town. No, I don't think that's necessary. Uh, no, I'm totally fine with it not being a big sign. I just think it's weird to have no graphics, but okay. Um, and then additional questions for our consideration. Would the town prefer to include a, a supplemental sign restrictions or design guidelines, further limiting window coverage, um, prohibiting neon signs, et cetera? I think that the, our town sign code now allows interior neon signs of a certain size inside of a storefront. Um, so I think that's covered. The 25% coverage of a window, uh, that seems like it could be a lot on a very big sheet of plate glass, but I don't know um, if anyone has any strong feelings no. about that. That's uh, current code right now, for, for us. I think it is yeah. 25%, but uh, depending on the size. Of, I mean, we can leave it as it is because it is current code. The other question was, would we prefer to allow or prohibit drive-through dispensaries? Um, I'm not a big fan of drive-through shopping, but that's just me. Um, but I think, I, I mean, I just have the image of people driving, you know, north from here and like, you know. So if, if, if we put something at like Fresh Town, that would be... There is a drive-through available. Yeah, that's a drive-through type, you know, situation. But in the center of town, I wouldn't want to see, you know, a drive-through. I don't, it's all kind of... 
um, half and half, and I don't know how we could Depending regulate that to say be. that, yes, you can have it in certain areas of the town, but not in the center of town. Well, the other thing that I'd be concerned about is you have to show ID and stuff if you go into a store. That would be a little more complicated in a drive through you, you show it at the window. Hmm? You show it at the window, oh, like drive through okay. alcohol. Oh, okay. There's drive through alcohol? They're more popular in the South, but Oh, yeah. I was going to say, because I've, I've been missing that. Um, yeah. Or if you go out well, so I've seen it. so much. Okay. Oh. You drive into like this big yeah, core, okay. and they come right to your car. <laughs> um, so that's all we got on that. Is well, that... Well, the, the last question, too. Oh, I'm sorry. Should all <laughs> cannabis retail dispensaries be, be considered a major project regardless of size? So I asked that question, and what that means is if we do that, it creates another level of uh, regulation or permitting applications. Uh, through the that planning has, board. Yeah, through the planning board and such. Um, one of the things that I heard a lot as I was campaigning around the town is that this town is known for making things too difficult to open up a business or to do anything. So personally, I would recommend that we do not make this major projects just normal projects. The only thing that I wondered about is like the size of the dispensary. I mean, but that's, that size that's of dispensary by... is regulated by New York State. Okay. Do you happen to know what those numbers are? I'm sorry? Do you happen to know what those numbers are? No, I do not. Okay. okay. Not offhand. It's, it's not. Find it's, that out for it's, us. Yeah, I, I had it before. I sent it to everybody before. I, I just oh. have to look back through. Well, yeah, it's not that great. Either. Either. Yeah, it's not huge. Okay. It's not like we're getting Walmart. I think there actually is something in our code about how large a retail place can be, but I'd have to look for that too. There was also something um, in there about um, how often it needed to be reviewed. I'm wondering. It said four years. Right. I'm wondering if maybe we should initially do like two years and then and then and then extend it afterwards. That's for the permit and the licensing, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's in the so license. So that doesn't have anything to do with us. I thought it was a. Well, it, in here it said every that's four years, how right? How often we want them the to renew? Licensing is for the state, isn't it? So, I mean, it, it, this is like a, yeah. Yeah. Right? it's just like any other business, right? It's not like a bar where we're allowing people to consume. It's, you know, a liquor store. Do we make them come before the board every two years to renew their license to their have permit. four years? Right. Right. I mean, four years seems reasonable to me. Okay. Do, you have, do we happen to know what it is for liquor stores? Do liquor stores have to have their licenses renewed regularly? Probably not. Probably not. Okay. I'll try to find that out, too. I can find that answer out for you. Okay. Uh, alcohol is a little bit more accepted in the country. Very true. We're a lot of the in. rules and regulations for marijuana are going to be modeled after the SLA. Uh -huh. um, one of my partners uh, does a significant amount of work with the SLA, so I can find out okay. some of the comparisons. Yeah, that would be great. Thank you, Brad. Um, so, uh, Ian, you're up next just sort of telling us where we are with the gift of the Gridley charcoal kilns. <clears throat> yeah, so um, I've spoken with uh, council um, and they agreed to give us uh, an extension to August 1st to finalize all the documentation. Um, and that is our next meeting. Dave. And that is our next meeting, yeah. So it's basically just uh, instead of trying to rush everything through and, and not dot all our I's and cross all our T's, um, they would give us to August 1st. Um, with all the same conditions in play, uh, I've I've got um, I've I've completed the legal analysis uh, with regards to governmental immunity, uh, to the zoning requirements. I've drafted I have a draft of the resolution, um, and as well as a draft of the donation agreement, um, uh, which uh, I plan to finalize uh, tomorrow and uh, get that over to council for review, and then we can kind of go back and forth with that and, and work with uh, uh, Bernie and, and, um, <coughs> Sorry. And, and get things finalized ahead of time. Okay, so uh, the next time we meet, we'll basically have all the pieces of that. Um, yeah, it's, but, hand. yep, yep. Okay, Bernie, you're, you can live with that? Okay, just want to make sure. sure. Okay. I was, I was ready to vote for yeah, yes for it tonight. We're ready on our end. I've got no, the Okay, um, great. It's all signed by Board of Health. Terrific. The description's all done, the deeds all drawn up. Thank you. Okay. So when you get done with the resolution, will you pass it to the planning board? 
Correct. So I've already got a phone call into the planning board because I'm going to coordinate with him uh, all the language that's in in the donation agreement with that's in the uh, in the resolution to have uh, uh, basically a seamless transition. So once once we pass the resolutions, it'll be green light and we can start checking the boxes of all the things that need to be done to to uh, effectuate the transfer or the donation. That, that's the last thing that you want is my line. Is the plan planning board? You can't sign that until you approve the resolution. Correct. Okay. But this is already, everything else is already. Great. Yeah, and I only found out, I think, like last week that the, the Mylar and the Platte were actually completed. So that, that's a huge uh, step in the right direction. So that's that's great to hear. Yeah. Uh, I haven't seen that yet. That has been provided to me. But if you get it to council, I can I can do that way. Or if you have them, I can <laughs> take them today. Take them. <laughs> Cheers. I'll have an email that over to you. Pardon? I'm sorry. I'll have an email that over to you. Yeah. Yeah. And I've, I've been in conversation with her all week. So. Um, Did they ask when the next planning board meeting was? Did somebody ask when? No. Okay. Next planning board gets set like every two weeks, isn't it? Yeah. It's. You no, know, the planning board's not meeting again until August 14th. Oh. Did you know that? Did you know that? Yeah, really what needs to be done here is through the, through the town board. So once the town board, um, once the town board okays the donation agreement and, and once we've completed and approved the, the, the legal analysis with regards to the immunity from zoning regulations, um, that's what's going to give us the green light to allow the planning board to do what it needs to do and then give you guys the authorization to start filing the plat, filing the Mylar. Um, you've already got the deeds, but uh, the meets and bounds, I just saw is in here. You're gonna need a tax ID number. All of that stuff will be in place and we can do the actual transfer of the, yeah, so. Um, okay, the next thing under discussion is request for planner to advise the comprehensive plan review committee. Um, thank you. Oh, thank you. Um, I, I, um, Bill Flood has spoken to me about them needing someone fairly soon to uh, help them draft uh, some changes. And I originally thought that Pace Land Use Center was going to be had volunteered to do that. But I guess um, now that we've now that we've uh, approved this motion, there would be money. Assuming they get the grant, there would be money for them to do that for free. So I think that's what they're. Okay. Aiming for, um, if that if that doesn't happen, then we may need to talk about getting someone to get them started. Um, he had uh, Bill had already said they need a um, a land use lawyer, and presumably they would use the the lawyer for the planning board since he's already you know on our docket. Any thoughts, questions? No. Okay, and the last thing was. Um, I think it was Ken Topolsky Ken actually Topolsky, had yeah. suggested that we have an industrial development committee, um, which is basically exists to provide incentives to businesses that are looking to move here. Um, but we don't actually have any, a committee that's focusing on economic development. In other words, it's sort of, it's sort of, uh, what is it? We're not being very proactive. We're basically, if someone comes uh, with a business and wants to open up, we're able to offer them some perks. But it seems to me that a committee could be doing more than that. That committee hardly ever meets. So, um, and I don't actually, Ian, even know what the, the know what the process is for starting. Well, for changing the mandate of a committee or um, expanding its duties. Um, I, how was this committee originally created? By resolution. By resolution. By resolution. Well, then I would do a resolution. So we just need, would need a resolution to change it. I guess we should also talk to the people that are on it now and make Making sure they're, they're in support of this. But um, OK. Well I, well, I think no, that Ken, Ken's uh, concern okay. was that he's trying to bring yeah. new yeah. yeah. He does that, which I didn't know. Did you so know that? Actually he, is a lot, he wears a lot of hats. He does wear a lot of hats. And, and he's been Sorry. very successful in other places bringing businesses in. And that's why he was looking for an economic development committee. Committee, right. And so you know, I don't know. Um, the industrial board, whatever it's called, they haven't met in years and right. years. 
Um, so maybe we can either um, have them call a meeting. Well, or either that, or you know, we not have that, or, or put them together and, and have I don't know. But oh yeah, I think that would be the idea. Is just to sort of give them a broader scope, so they're not like just waiting for something to arrive, but actually trying to make that happen. Um, like but, just, yeah, being more proactive. And right. Do you think that we actually should see if we can get them to call a meeting to discuss this? Well, I think we should, and we probably should ask Ken, um, since this, this is his idea, yeah. um, invite him, or I don't know how exactly we would do that, but you know, maybe we should have, um, or maybe we should meet with them as a board, I, I don't know. But uh, you know, Ken should kind of share his ideas. I was hoping he was gonna be here tonight. Um, so he could share his ideas of what he's he's kind of looking for. Yeah, I mean, I guess the other thing we could do is we could invite we could invite the members of the committee to a town board meeting. Right. Um, that's what and I meant, maybe yeah. that's the yeah maybe that's the easiest way to do that. Um, all right. Do you know who that happened? Does anyone happen to know off the top of their heads who the chair is of the? In, they haven't met. In oh, they would need to meet years. to have a chair. Okay. But currently, you guys have Catherine Lee, Tracy Saladay, Nina Peak, Lorenzo Scafani, and James Wright are on that committee. Oh, okay. Um, then reach out to Jim would be a good person yeah, to reach out to. Okay, I think that's a good idea. Okay, so that's it for um, discussion items. Unless anyone else has something they'd like to discuss. Do we have the liaison is for that? Oh, that'd be you. Do it was me, right? I was oh. like, I feel like I'm the liaison. <laughs> 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 and this was okay. created in 2008. I'm the liaison. We could make you responsible for, like, you know, <laughs> oh. making that happen. Just you mm -hmm. asked. <laughs> I know, I, I had a feeling it was Industrial board members, me. thank you. Yeah. Industrial board. Okay, well, I will call Jim Wright, since I kind of owe him a phone call anyway, and see uh, if he is willing to kind of gather up the members and get them to a town board meeting with, and we can invite Ken Topolsky. I think that would be a great thing. And I'm gonna say it was done by resolution, but it was for a local law, proposed, it was local law number three of 2008. It was, local law. It's clear by local So law. do we have to revise that, or, I mean, do we have to, rem uh, and that and start over, or do we just revise that? It, it, if you're amending the responsibilities, you would do it by local law. If you're going to get rid of it and create something totally different, you would, Well, I would I'd clean, I'd clean up your local law and I'd rescind it. And yeah, then, I and think then. that we are basically asking them to, I mean, what they do now is they are trying to help businesses that say they want to come here, but they don't do anything in terms of attracting business or, um, you know, or, or sort of reaching out to businesses. Mm -hmm. They're just kind of waiting, so it would be it would be essentially what they do, but just um, with a more proactive stance, I think. So what I would recommend is if, if the board has um, an idea or or a concept of a charge that it would like to to give that committee, let's get that in writing. I can analyze the law, look what it looks like, and then match okay. what's there and see what see what if anything needs to be done, and and then I can come back with a game plan for you on. Okay. I don't. Uh, Don? But if it was created by local law, it needs to be amended by local law. Apparently, apparently I need a uh, username and password to get to those documents. No. Uh, okay. Because I'm on my phone doing it. Really? Um, are you able to send us the, sure. um, I have the existing local law so we can... Okay, that would be great. Oh. No, there's no username, no password. Take all that out. There is no, you have dots there, take it out. Okay. I just emailed it to you all. Thank you. It's number 48. Okay. Thank you. Did you I need a password? Actually, it does what you're asking. You it's already there. Okay. That's that's what I wanted yeah. to check because it was there. Right. Also, is to, there's, there's tax incentives under New York State law that. Right. So they just need a, you know, a little you just need to <laughs> around. Hmm? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so I think we can move into resolutions then. Um, the first resolution, um, which I am going to let Paul read, because by the time I find it, we don't even want to know what, 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 what resolution number is. 84. Resolution number 84 of 2024 authorizes submissions of Climate Smart Communities, CSC, 
grant program application. Where is the town of Amenia request financial assistance from the New York State Climate Smart Communities grant program pursuant to environmental conservation law, Article 54, Title 15? And where is the town of Amenia certifies that it has identified 5,000 of matching funds from the Climate Smart Tax Force budget line in the town of Amenia's general fund pursuant to requirements of environmental conservation law, Article 45? Title 15 now it therefore be resolved as follows. The recitation set forth or above or incorporated into this in this resolution as, as if fully set forth and adopted it herein. The Town of Amenia Board hereby authorizes Christina Gast, a member of the Town of Amenia Conservation Advisory Council to act on its behalf in the submission of an application to the consolidated funding application for 25,000 to be used for adding and updating in the elements, updating elements in the Town of Amenia's comprehensive plan per CSC PE6 comprehensive plan with substantiality elements, a copy of which is here, annexed here too. I'll make that motion. I'll second it, and I will just say that Christina Gast actually is in the audience if anyone has any questions. But the gist of this is to, um, is to obtain money that will uh, be used to assist the comprehensive plan committee in uh, adding sustainability, or maybe it's a, an addendum, but to, uh, to bring sustainability elements into the comp plan to give them information on that. Is that about right? Yeah. Okay. Supervisor Blackman? Yes. Council members Rebler? Yes. Pam? Yes. Winters? Yes. Ahern? Yes. Okay. Great. <laughs> Okay, now I'm caught up to speed, except I don't know what resolution number we're talking 85. about. 85. Okay. Okay, four. Okay, so authorizing settlement of tax cert proceedings commenced by William uh, Eisenbeis, trustee of the William H. Eisenbeis Revocable Trust et al. Um, whereas there is now pending in the Dutchess County Supreme Court tax cert, cert uh, proceedings commenced in 2022 and 2023 by William Eisenbeis, trustee of the William H. Eisenbeis Revocable Trust et al. regarding a parcel of property located at 70 Westerly Ridge Drive in the town of Amenia, uh, tax map number 132000-7267-00-203904-0000, seeking a reduction and correction of the 2022 and 2023 assessments for the respective tax rolls. And whereas the town assessor and special counsel have recommended a settlement on these tax review proceedings, now therefore to be it resolved as follows. The recitations set forth above are incorporated in this resolution as if fully set forth and adopted herein. The town board of the town of Amenia hereby approves the settlement of the tax review proceedings for the years 2022 and 2023 on behalf of the town of Amenia as they pertain to the parcel identified as follows. Tax map number 132000-7267-00-203904-0000. Um, and it says the year of assessment of 2022, the original total assessment was uh, $2,300,000, and the revised total assessment is $1,900,000, the reduction being $400,000. Uh, in the year 2023, the original total assessment was uh, uh, $2,553,000, and the revised assessment is $2,100,000, meaning a reduction of $453,000. I mean $453, um, and the, uh, the, the, the uh, consent judgment is attached. Um, the town supervisor, town assessor, and Shane J. Egan, Esquire, special counsel to the town of Amenia, are hereby authorized to take all actions necessary and appropriate to effectuate, effectuate the terms of this resolution. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Discussion? Sure. Um, so if we go to the back, uh, the last page there, um, it shows that the total town refund from 2022 and 2023 will be zero. Uh, for 2022, it's uh, no fire refund, no town refund, no county refund, no school refund. For the right. year 2023, it's no town refund, no fire refund, no county refund, but a, a school refund of 4,203.84. I'm just kind of curious as to why 
that happened. I spoke with Shane, oh, go ahead. and he said that um, that's what they would not they would not budge on. They that. wouldn't budge on and it. And the school district has okayed it. Okay. Thank you. And yeah, the school district has its own council. Yep. Both matters. So. Um, <laughs> And they, 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 they did agree to, to this. Okay. Yeah. Right. Supervisor Blackman? Okay. Yes. Council members Rebler? Yes. Cam? Yes. Winters? Yes. Ahern? Yes. Okay. Um, resolution number 86. Do you want to take this, Nicole? Resolution 86 of 2024 approving, oh my gosh, this is big. Approving proposal for engineering services in connection with Town of Amenia Water District number one capital projects. Whereas the Town of Amenia is seeking professional engineering services in connection with the Town of Amenia Water District capital project. And whereas the Town Board authorized the formal solicitation for request for qualifications for engineering services for the Town of Amenia Water District from qualified engineers in connection to the Town of Amenia Water District capital projects. And whereas Requests for qualifications for engineering services were duly published and responses were received by the following. Do I have to name all, the, all these companies? Uh, probably. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. CT, uh, is it Mali? Mail. Asso Mail. Mail Associates, Delaware Engineering, H2M Architects, Engineers, Land Surveying, and Landscape Architects, LaBella Associates, LaBerge Engineering and Consulting Group, MJ Engineering and Land Surveying, and Tie and Bond, Inc. Whereas the qualifications have been reviewed and evaluated by VRI, the water district operator, and whereas the town board of the town of Amenia has reviewed and evaluated all the responses and has considered VRI's evaluation, and whereas the town board of the town of Amenia has requested a proposal from Delaware Engineering DPC and would like to retain the services of Delaware Engineering DPC at the cost of 36000 to be paid in equal payments of $12,000 over the course of three months and in accordance with their professional service agreement, a copy of which is annexed here too. And whereas this is a type two action under the State Environment Quality Review Act, CEQA, and therefore not subject to review under CEQA, and whereas the professional engineering services to be provided by Delaware Engineering DPC to the town constitute professional services which are exempt from the bill bidding requirements under general municipal law 103 and the town of Amenia's procurement policy. Now th therefore be it resolved as follows, the recitations set forth above are incorporated in this resolution as if fully set forth and adopted herein. The town board of the town of Amenia has determined that this is a type two action under CECRA and therefore not subject to review under CECRA. The town board determines that all professional engineering services to be provided by Delaware Engineering DPC to the town constitute professional services which are exempt from the bidding requirements under General Municipal Law 103 and the Town of Amenia's procurement policy. The Town Board hereby approves the professional services agreement from Delaware Engineering DPC dated July 10th, 2024 for professional engineering services in connection with the Town of Amenia Water District capital projects, a copy of which is annexed here too. The Town Board hereby authorizes the Town Supervisor to execute the Annex Professional Service Agreement from Delaware Engineering DPC in connection with the Town of Amenia Water District Capital Projects. The Town Board hereby authorizes the payment for said engineering services in the amount of $15,000 from the Water Engineering Budget Line number 83404.06.163, with the balance being paid from the American Rescue Plan Budget Line number 201.01000.201. I make that motion. Nicely done. I'll <laughs> second. Uh, just a quick discussion. I don't see. No. It says here we're paying fifteen thousand dollars for water budget engineering budget line, and then the balance. What it's is twenty one? Let's see. It's thirty six. Is what it says, right? Yeah. And three. You're authorizing a total of thirty six thousand. Okay. Fifteen is coming from the one. The right. line. The balance of that. So one. that's twenty one. Supervisor Blackman. Uh, yes. Council members Rebeler. Yes. Ham. Yes. Winters. Yes. Ahern. Yes. Okay, uh, let's see, uh, Brad, do you wanna take the next one, the contract for the town hall gymnasium floor? Oh, okay, let me just get to that one. Would you rather take the one after that? No, I had something else up on the screen. Oh, oh okay, I got it. You want me to read it? No, 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 he's okay. got it. So awarding contract for the town of Amenia gymnasium floor project. Whereas the town of Amenia town board is seeking to refinish the town hall gymnasium floor or in the alternative to replace, replace it with a fluid, wood floor alternative if 
refinishing is not possible. And whereas the town of Amenia, pursuant to the town procurement policy, obtained proposals for qualified comp from qualified companies to refinish the town, <coughs> excuse me, gymnasium floor, or in the alternative to replace it with a wood floor alternative. And whereas four proposals were received, a copy of the summary, summary of re responses is annexed hereunto and made part of, and made a part of hereof. And whereas the town of Aminia board has received the proposals and determined that Gulati Associates Incorporated, GAI, submitted the lowest, lowest responsible bid and recommended that the town board award the contract for refinishing the town hall gymnasium floor to GAI in the amount of $17,308. And the alternative replaced the floor with a Herculon floor in the amount of 41,500. And whereas pursuant to 6NYCRR part 617.5C1, the maintenance or repair involving no substantial changes in the existing structure is deemed a type two action under the State and Environmental Quality Review Act and therefore is not subject to review under CEQA. Uh, now therefore it be resolved as follows. The recitations set forth are incorporated into this resolution as fully set forth and adopted here on to. The town board has determined that this is a type two action and under CEQA and therefore there is not subject to review under CEQA. The town board of the town of Amenia hereby awards the contract for the refinishing of the town hall gymnasium floor or uh, to GAI in the amount of $17,308 or in the alternative replace the floor with a Herculon floor the amount of 41,500. The town board and the town board of Amenia hereby authorizes and directs payment for such project from budget line. Do we somebody have it? It's not here. What? It's out of my, uh, out of my screen. Oh. Once. Uh, 71451.01. And budget line number in amount of? 15,000. Okay, in accordance with the proposal here on and Annex 2, the town board and the town of Mina hereby authorizes the supervisor to execute the contract after review by the attorney to the town in accordance with the annexed proposal. And I will make that motion. I'll second that. Supervisor Blackman? Yes. Council members Rebelard? Yes. Cam? Yes. Winters? Yes. Ingram? Yes. Great. And Rosanna, do you want to take the, the next one? This is the number... The building inspector, which would be number... 88. I'm sorry, 88? Mm -hmm. Resolution number 88, appointing part-time deputy building inspector. Whereas there is currently a need for a part-time deputy building inspector in the Town of Amenia Building Department to conduct weekly building inspections, issue building permits, certificates of occupancy, and perform other responsibilities of the department, including enforcement of local building and zoning laws. And whereas a position of part-time deputy building inspector is a non-competitive position pursuant to the rules for the classified civil service of Dutchess County, and whereas the town board of the town of Amenia has determined it is necessary and appropriate to fill the position of part-time deputy building inspector. Now therefore be it resolved as follows. The recitations set forth above are incorporated in this resolution as if fully set forth and adopted herein. The town board of the town of Amenia hereby appoints Patrick Lawler to the position of part-time deputy building inspector at a salary of $28 per hour for no more than 20 hours per week, commencing on Thursday, September 5th, 2024. The town board of the town of Amenia hereby authorizes and directs the town supervisor and the town bookkeeper to follow, file any and all documentation necessary to effectuate the intent of this resolution. I make that motion. I'll second that. Supervisor Blackman? Uh, yes. Council members Rebler? Yes. Pam? Yes. Winters? Yes. Jager. Yes. Okay, and there's a last uh, resolution, which is transfer <coughs> of money, which, uh, as usual, I can find on my desk. So, does someone have that? Thank you. Um, this is resolution number 89 of 2024, 
Whereas the town board has the authority to transfer funds when necessary or, un or unanticipated to amend the budget. And whereas budget amendment in the general fund increased 2260.01 public safety services by $728.61 and increase 30204.01 public safety community service, we hope, by uh, $728.61 for DC, DC Sheriff Services for Congregation Beth David. Uh, whereas budget amendment in the general fund increase 12204.01.048 supervisor CE conferences by $50 and decrease uh, number 16604.01.074 central storeroom supplies by $50. Whereas budget amendment in the general fund increase 16201.01 buildings EQ by $1,800 and decrease 19004.01.049 special items contingency by $1,800 for the installation of Town of Amenia signs. Whereas budget amendment in the general fund increase 50104.01.074 superintendent of highway CE supplies by $102.69 and decrease 50104.01.048 superintendent of highway conferences by $102.69. Whereas budget amendment in the general fund increased 90508.01 unemployment insurance by $278.32 and decreased 36204.01.074 safety inspection CE supplies by $278.32 for unemployment claim by former employee. Now therefore it be it resolved the town board authorizes the transfer and necessary budget lines to process the transactions. transactions. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Supervisor Blackman? Yes. Council members Regular? Yes. Sam? Yes. Winters? Yes. Ahern? Yes. She was missing hers too. Hmm? She was missing hers too. Oh yeah, I'm sorry about that. Um, okay, uh, other matters. Do we have any items? Does anyone have any items under other matters? Um, I have a, just a, a comment or other matters. Uh, I attended the AWCO meeting on Tuesday, and in the course of discussion about another men, member, the superintendent of the Weaver Tech School District said that he could include us in any kind of a blast, you know, for emails in case there is a uh, problem like the water problem we had. Um, it would just be a matter of us getting people signed up, and he was willing to do that. So it might be something that we might want to either look into or discuss. Oh, are we talking about the, the mass text messaging that yes, they do? Yes, text okay. messaging. Uh, um, they, they do text messaging, emailing, and calling. Right, but they have, parents have to sign up for it, correct? Right. You have to sign up for it, yes. Right. And that would be, that, he says that's always the challenge is to get people to sign, you know, to sign up for it. But um, the offer is there. Okay, that's great. And presumably our new website system will have that capability. Um, but again, it's going to be an issue of getting people to sign up for that. I mean, I would think that people would want to know if there's a flood or a tornado, but, um, you know, uh, people are going to have to sign up if they want to get that information from us. But we don't know how long that's going to take. No, no, no. I mean, I don't but think this is should, a bad answer. Should, should, I mean, I'm just thinking that if, in the meantime, maybe we want to look into that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, anyone else? Yeah, uh, the, our, the committee was looking for an update on the Fountain Square uh, plumbing problem. My understanding from the plumber, or the, my understanding from John Nowak, was that the plumber needed to get a particular part because it's sort of an old, the, the piece is old, um, and they were still trying to get that, which is right. unfortunate. But um, I asked them if they could replace the whole thing, and apparently they can't. Also from the Enhancement Committee, um, uh, not sure I want to ask this, but Ian, what's the update on the land in uh, Lost Lake? I've actually just sent another email to our title company to get a status report from the state. Um, they haven't gotten back to me yet. I'll continue to follow. Okay. All right. And I'm going to suggest actually at our next meeting, if we don't have any response, that we should just make a resolution to proceed on that project because mm -hmm. there doesn't seem to be any, be any documentation and it certainly has been used by the town for many, many if, if we had to, could we use, um, what is that word, the town takes the land? Oh, gosh. There could be a number of different um, avenues by which we could 
try to rectify the situation because we're just the state has this document which is leaving a, a big gaping hole in the, in the title um, I have requested that they provide me uh, essentially what's a, a last owner search so and well that's kind of what we did now I'm asking them to put it in, in the form of a title report so I can actually determine what we'll have to do in order to to either either quiet title adverse possess and then domain whatever it might be so we can kind of figure out our next steps on what we have to do can we call in some political help would that make a difference if we got our state senator to call them you, you could try i mean not it, it wouldn't hurt i don't think um uh but it would you know the more, the finish the trail where it stops for sure um okay so would you send me what i need to ask them to do Sure. Um, and I will ask them to do it. Um, Leo, you mentioned new website. Did you already decide on a new website provider? Uh, no. The um, I thought that I thought was in my report. No. It was mentioned that you were going to do feedback, but you mm -hmm. just said the new website would provide callbacks. Oh, well, the, the eventual new website. I mean, apparently a lot of them are set up to do that. Oh, okay. Um, and so, so but, but Charlie set up a survey that we can ask residents for what, what they want, what, and they, what want, they need, basically, and then, okay. and then we'll, you know, we can take it from there. But there is one, there is one more little thing. Um, I, ha I haven't had much luck with talking to DOT, um, so I'm, I'm asking you to call them. Um, maybe you have more clout on getting the um, the Maple Brook uh, lights up. I asked if it was possible to get them completed before their uh, fall session starts. And he said, possibly, but, you know. I Do you like think to... I should talk to the person you spoke to or to someone else? I sp speak to somebody different all the time. Oh, great. Okay. All right. I'll Maybe speak to the person that sent the email. Okay. Um, and I have just one thing uh, under ten board comments, I guess, rather than other matters, which is just that I wanted to congratulate the Amenia Garden Club. They had their tour of five properties on Saturday, and they got 140 people to attend, nice. which they were excited about. So, um, and it was fun. I actually got to go. I never get to go to these things. So I actually got to wander around and see uh, places in Amenia I've never seen before. Um, okay, anything else from anyone? Then I would make a motion that we adjourn the meeting. I'll second that. And this is maybe our fastest meeting ever. It might be. So whatever we did, we could keep doing it. Supervisor Blackman? Uh, yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Council members, mentors. Yes. Revelard. Yes. Pam. Yes. Ahern. Yes. We, we were just trying.